Okay, thank you once again to the Rotary Club of Ramiri Modulli. It's a very informative presentation. It threw me back to Form 5 days doing biology. It was very interesting. We now move on to Rotary Club Antigua Sundong, who will be presenting on their Barbuda Water Project. We invite you to the stage, Rotary Club Antigua Sundong. Oh, cool. All right, good, good. Good afternoon, everyone. I hope everyone is still awake. No French, no. <laughs> okay, I'm here to talk to, to you today about a project of the Rotary Club of Antigua Sundown entitled Water for the Schools of Barbuda. Barbuda is a sister island to Antigua located just north of Antigua. Uh, in terms of an outline, we're first going to define the problem. Uh, a little background on the whole project. I'll tell you a little bit about Barbuda, which is a small island that's quite remote and not known to many people. Some specifics about the project, and then some details on the costs and how we were able to fund this ambitious project. And then most important, how we intend to keep this um, project uh, maintained and provide ongoing support. Okay, to start by explaining the problem. I don't need to tell any of you that the whole Caribbean over the last four years, particularly the Eastern Caribbean, have been going through some severe droughts. The droughts are longer, more intense, and when we do get rain, they come also all at once and very intensely. So for islands like Antigua that rely on rainwater harvesting and, catch and rainwater catchments, this has become a bigger problem for us. So I'm just going to give you some excerpts from some newspaper articles starting back in this first one from, the, from Caribbean 360, dated February 2014. This is about when we started seeing some of the worst droughts in recorded history in the Eastern Caribbean, stre stretching from Barbados all the way to Jamaica. So in 2014, you'll see this news article um, talking about the Antigua Public Utilities Authority, our only water provider who had embarked in a water rationing program. And this has become an ongoing problem. In my area in Antigua, this time of the year, I'm lucky if I have running water 12 hours per week. Uh, second newspaper article from January 2015. So, We've had a really bad drought in 2014, another one in 2015. Again, the Public um, Water Authority is talking about rationing again. And then finally, another one from the Associated Press in San Juan, Puerto Rico, which just so, shows how extensive the project, I mean, the drought has been going right into 2015, where it's affected everywhere from Jamaica in the north all the way down to Trinidad in the south. So, going back to our own country, um, we generally, being a flat island, have very limited rainfall. Typical rainfall is about 40 inches a year. But over the last three to four years, we're seeing substantially less than that, um, often around 30 to 35 inches. The water utility cannot supply water consistently. Rationing is just becoming a way of life now. Our reservoirs and dams often empty. You'll see these two pictures. The top picture shows what our main um, dam, Potworks Dam, in the center of the island normally looks like, and you'll see what happened last summer. It, you can practically drive a car across the reservoir. So we've had no choice but to move to desalination over the years. 70% of our water supply now comes from seawater desalination. But yet, we still have major rationing. It's not uncommon in most areas of the island, particularly rural areas, to only get running water about one day a week. So how does this affect the schools in Antigua and Barbuda? Well, a little fella there kind of 
uh, explains the problem. You know, he's out of school, his school is closed. That room that he's standing by, beside was an old pump room that used to house um, a water pump that would back up, uh, well, so when the water supply went off, the pump would come on and provide water to the school. Well, he's out of school, school is closed, there's no pump, there's no, back water, there's no backup water system. So this was a problem that our club faced when we started looking at water projects in Antigua back in 2010. Rainwater harvesting is something that's been practiced extensively in Antigua for many centuries. And you'll see most public schools, they've been built several decades ago, and they all have cisterns, but commonly the equipment to pump the water from the cisterns around the school to the, to the restrooms, lavatories are not there. And on top of that, this become more, more important now because the water rationing from the, the water utility. So sometimes the schools have to close because of unsanitary conditions. I'll go back there. Now, this is our first visit to a principal at a rural school in Antigua and Erlins Primary School. You'll see all those plastic bottles outside the principal's office. Guess what they're for? Every time a student wants to go to the bathroom, he's give, they're given one of those plastic bottles to flush the toilet and wash their hands with. So that's how bad it, it has gotten. So here is the project that we went out to do. We, we, knew, we all know that water and sanitation is one of RI's six focus areas, a very important part of um, Rotary International's um, focus. Um, our, project our club decided that we would focus on water projects um, as much as we can. We were lucky last year to partner with the Embassy of Switzerland out to the Dominican Republic, and they came up with about 30,000 US dollars to fund different water projects in Antigua and Barbuda. So as part of that larger project, we installed four backup water systems in rural public schools in Antigua, one for, an, for a Salvation Army home for abused and abandoned girls, and finally, at a primary school in Deaki in Barbuda, which is what I'm gonna focus on today. And prior to this, our club had also installed similar backup systems at three public schools in 2010. Okay, so this is typical, typically what the projects involve at each school. We go to the school, we assess the, the, water, the rainwater collection system, we repair east troughs on the building down spouts which take the water into the cisterns. If there's no cistern or the cistern's leaking, we provide them with those black plastic tanks that you see there, and then we install a pump system to pump the water from the tanks to the restrooms and around the school. So these were projects that were completed in 2010, T.N. Kernan Primary School, Erlins Primary School. More recent ones that were done in 2016 at Freetown Primary and Seaview Farm Primary. That's our district governor, Roger, attending one of these handovers. Okay, then two more projects, Freeman's Village Primary, Bethesda Primary. So that's a total of four schools, and this is the project at the Home for Abandoned and Abused Girls. Okay, then we went over to Barbuda. Barbuda is much more challenging because um, the utility does have only desalination facilities there, but they're inadequate to provide enough water for the whole island. So typically you get fresh water during the day and every time and from about five or six in the evening they start pumping brackish water into your lines. Brackish water typically is water with salinity, in, in their case about six times more salty than what we would consider acceptable as um, possible water. So you're unable, to, you're unable to drink this and even if you use this for domestic purposes it, it has a lot of issues. 
So Barbuda, located about 27 miles north of Antigua, area about 62 square miles, population only 1,600 people, so it's quite a remote, low populated country, island. Um, elevation, the highest point is only 124 feet, but if you go to Barbuda, more than 90% of the island is less than two feet above sea level. So very prone to even uh, uh, a mini tsunami wiping them out very easily. Um, there's a big, you'll see on the map of the island, there's a huge inland um, lagoon that's about 16 and a half miles long, and that's right next to the main village of Codrington where this project was located. So this is what we found when we went to the primary school and daycare facilities there. There are systems that, the one at the top, probably about two or 300 years old, leaking, no roof, and in bad state of repairs. The one, another one at the primary school, you can see, was totally filled with debris, rocks, garbage, hadn't been used for years. Um, so we went to the school. These are some of the students at the Holy Trinity School. The primary school has about 230 students. And as part of this project, we, we also did one centralized water distribution system that provided water to the primary school, a preschool that's across the road in the south, and to a daycare that's across the road, again, on the east. So we had 230 students in the primary school, 50 students in the preschool, and 26 infants in the daycare. Now, when we got to the daycare that day, there were lots, I didn't show any pictures of the babies, but there are lots of babies in there. And there are areas where they um, are bathed and food prepared. And you'll see what happens. The, the, the caregivers have to take those buckets that you'll see with a rope attached, go out, climb up in that cistern, take the water out the top of the cistern, and, and be walking back and forth into the building. So it was quite an arduous process for them. So here's how we tackle the problem. Across the street, there was a community well, probably about a 200-year-old well that had not been used in decades. We cleaned it out. Um, the water in it was quite brackish. Uh, it's about, again, about five or six times more saline than what we would consider acceptable for potable water. So we put a pump system, a submersible pump system in there. Um, you'll see there's a solar-powered um, array at the top of the well. So every, this whole system is totally solar powered. So it operates um, whether there's electricity on or not. Um, the school is also a um, hurricane shelter. So the Barbuda Council was very happy for us to supply a, a system that would work even after a hurricane when there was no, uh, no electricity being provided by the utility. And on the far right, you'll see a very simple reverse osmosis system. Nothing electrical, everything is totally mechanical, very simplified, that treats the water, demineralizes it, and brings it to potable water standards. Okay, so once the water is desalinated, we pump it back over the street to the rainwater system at the school. You'll see after the system's been cleaned out, that's been filled with water in the middle picture. And then a new pump system was installed, that's the picture on the far right which pumps water not just to the primary school, but to the preschool across the street and the daycare that's nearby as well. So that's a site layout. It's um, just to put that in, in scale, it's about 2,200 feet of pipe that had to be laid to join the, the well to the school and then to take the water from the cistern at the school across the, to the south to the um, preschool and, and to the east to the DRK center, and then also to send the reject or brine water from the desalination plant into the mangrove in the north. So, how did we fund this? This whole project probably cost about 50,000 US dollars. Um, we had about 8,000 US dollars from the Swiss Embassy um, as part of the project funding. Um, we had a, we had submitted the whole idea of a solar RO system is pretty new technology, and we had gotten a 50,000 US dollar award from the Caribbean Climate Innovation Center based in, in Jamaica, 
um, to do three proof of concept um, demonstration type systems. We did two in Antigua and then we, uh, we just happened to be lucky enough to, in the timing to be able to get funding from that project to deal with the solar reverse osmosis part of the project and then use the Swiss funding to do the water distribution side of it. So the whole project was managed by the Rotary Club of Antigua Sundown and design and installation done by Caribbean Water Treatment. Okay, obviously, it, although it's a fairly reliable system, we had installed this back at the end of August, just before the new school year, and we hadn't even, we hadn't gone back there until about two weeks ago. We did a handover ceremony with the Barbuda Council at the school. No one had done anything, and the system was still running fine. Um, but there are fills to change, water tests to be done periodically. So we, we will continue to provide ongoing technical support and training um, to ensure that the system continues to run reliably. So we have the Codrington Lagoon National Park Rangers who have been trained in the operation and maintenance of the system. We'll continue to provide ongoing technical support and most importantly to provide them the supplies, the filters, um, and, and parts that they're going to need to keep the system operational. And as I said, it's been operating quite reliably since September 2016. Okay, and that's the team. That's the Swiss Honorary Council to the left. Our President Terrell, who's in the back, he's, he's standing behind, a member of the Barbuda Council, and a park ranger and myself. So. That's the project. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much to the Rotary Club Antigua Sundown. And special mention should be made that our presenter is actually representative from Caribbean Water Treatment to bring them on as a sponsor. So that's even more commendable. Thank you. <laughs>